In this video, we're going to have a look at flow EFD as applied to electronics cooling. Uh, on the screen, we have a simple set top box with a PCB and a heatsink, and also a fan used for forced air. We have air which will be entering through the slots on the side and then being expelled out of these uh, holes right next to the fan as such. So Flow EFD for Solid Edge is embedded within the Solid Edge GUI. This is Solid Edge ST9 and you can see we have the Flow Analysis tab and we also have the Flow EFD Analysis tab here which we'll come on to very shortly. So let's very quickly go through the, uh, the Flow EFD wizard to set up the, uh, the base parameters for our project. So we're going to choose our unit system. Let's choose the US Custom. Uh, this is going to be an external analysis as there are no defined inlets and outlets. We're going to be con considering heat conduction solids radiation okay let's put on a uh, an ambient temperature uh, worst case scenario of 100 degrees fahrenheit gravitational effects because there's going to be mixed convection both internal and external and we can see the uh, the gravitational arrow on the screen there uh, and we're not concerned with rotation uh, we're going to choose air as the working fluid so let's double click that and put that into the project uh, we also need to choose a default solid. So uh, most of the components in the model are going to be the chips on the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the semiconductors section. No, not the semiconductors, the IC packages section and choose a typical chip, uh, a typical chip array as the default material. Uh, I need to set my ambient temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit and also over here as well. And with all of these completed, I click finish and we get a computational domain around the geometry. And this is the amount of world that we're going to be simulating in our electronics cooling example. Obviously a little bit too big at the moment, so let's uh, just uh, resize that by coming over to our flow EFD analysis tree, coming to our computational domain and just dragging that in so it's tighter on the geometry and we're only going to be simulating the air directly around the electronics. So again, let's just zoom Go normal to the screen, zoom out, something like that. And that now sets our computational domain accordingly around uh, my geometry. So let's uh, next apply some materials in the model. Flow EFD, uh, the insert uh, conditions tab shows the various features that can be applied onto the geometry. As we can see, we're gonna use solid materials, but there's fans, there's volume sources. And towards the bottom in the electronics cooling module, we have components such as the two resistor component, electrical conditions, heat pipes, thermal joints, uh, and the printed circuit board. But for now, let's just use the solid material. And it's a case of either clicking on the screen here we have just populated the cover and I can also click in the solid edge tree as well, the parts tree, the components that I wish to apply my metal onto. So with the case in the cover, these are sheet metal uh, items. So I'm gonna to come to alloys and come down to a just a mild steel, uh, tick okay. And now we have steel applied onto these two components. Uh, the next thing I want to do is apply some uh, other materials. So for example, my heat sink is going to be an aluminum alloy. So let's choose aluminum 6061. And if I hide my heat sink, underneath there is a thermal interface material, a thermal grease component. So let's, uh, let's apply material onto that and select it and go to my user defined. And I have a thermal tape 3M thermal tape component, which I'm going to apply onto there with the correct resistivity, density, and uh, specific heat from the, the manufacturer data sheet. So there's my materials, which I'm going to be using in the model. One last one, uh, the actual fan. I can click those components, go to my predefined, uh, go to my polymers, and let's just choose a, uh, a nylon, for example, for a low conductivity polymer. Next, let's uh, insert a fan. Okay, a fan is just a linked boundary condition, which is going to be extracting air from one side and push it back in, pushing it back into the other. So the faces that the fluid exits the fan, that's going to be this particular face in the model. Okay, I click on the screen and it populates that into the box. And then the face that the fluid enters the fan, and that's going to be this face over here. And then I need to link those two together with a fan curve. So let's go to my axial fan curves. And let's go to Pabst and choose my PAPS 412, which is a, a standard electronics cooling fan. Um, the electronics cooling module comes with a more uh, expanded library of manufacturer 
uh, components and uh, the fan curves are one of those and you can see on the screen the green arrows indicating the direction of the airflow. Okay, uh, let's hide my thermal interface material and talk about how we uh, dissipate heat on some chips. So I want to use the two resistor component. The two resistor component is a slightly better way of modeling ICs uh, in that it allows for the heat flow either down into the PCB or up into the case. Um, it's better than just using a volume heat load and should be used for the more critical components in the model. So first of all, I need to select the top face of my model uh, of my 2R component, which is going to be this one. It populates the rest of the body. And then let's go to my user defined section and choose my FPGA, which is in this case, it's an Altera Stratix 2. And if I come to the, uh, the engineering database for this particular component, you can see I've got my thermal resistance from junction to case, junction to board. These are straight from the data sheet, the uh, theta JC and theta JB numbers. And then I can dissipate a power on this. So let's say, uh, let's say 8.8 .8 watts and tick OK. And now we have our thermal dissipation on this particular component with the call out to, to show where that is. Uh, if I wanted to have just uh, another straightforward uh, power dissipation, I can use a volume source. So using a volume source, I can click on my RAM chips over here. Okay, let's just uh, put uh, select these four bodies and then a total power dissipation of let's say two watts. So what that's going to do is that's going to split that evenly across the bodies. So with two watts, each one of these components is going to have 0.5 watts uh, power dissipation, steady state. I can also create some more. So let's just choose this guy over here and let's say he's dissipating 1.5. And like this, I can click on the bodies and dissipate power. Uh, which will be reflected in our final temperature uh, prediction uh, when we look at the results. Uh, the next thing is to look at the printed circuit board. The PCB is more and more becoming a critical heat flow path as uh, devices get smaller and the copper content of the board starts to go up. We can use a printed circuit board just by uh, clicking on the screen and rather than having a fully detailed uh, copper, explicit copper geometry represent, representation, we're going to use the printed circuit board uh, smart part feature in Flow EFD for Solid Edge. So I expand out the predefined and the 2S2P, that stands for 2 signal 2 power. And if I again come into the engineering database, we can have a look at the number of layers within this uh, PCB and the percentage coverage of copper on each of these layers. And what that's going to give us is a in-plane and a through-plane conductivity for this PCB. So you can see it's, it's much more conductive in the in-plane direction, i.e. it will spread in the, uh, the XY direction and it's, a, it's more resistive in the Z direction, i.e. through the PCB, as you would expect. And uh, the, the PCB smart part takes that into account. It understands what the, uh, the thinnest dimension is and applies the, 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 the Z direction in, in, the, in the thinnest direction. And uh, this is the PCB smart parts particularly useful for when you have things like angled boards and you need to make sure that you've got the, uh, the correct uh, conductivity direction in the X, Y, and Z. Okay, so that's some of the, uh, the features that I've applied onto the model. We do have other things like uh, heat pipes or electrical conditions. We have thermal electric coolers. Uh, we can also support Delphi models using the network assembly as well, if wished. So wide range of uh, electronics cooling type features which are built into Flow EFD. The last thing I need to do is define a engineering goal. So an engineering goal is a way of determining various features in the model uh, or various parameters in the model that we're interested in knowing about. So this is an electronics cooling example. So what we want to know is what's what's the maximum chip temperature of, uh, of my main CPU going to be? Well, to do that, I select the chip. I can look in my parameter list, things like velocities, uh, pressures, temperatures. Uh, but in this instance, I'm interested in the maximum temperature of the solid. Okay, and then I can rename this CPU temp. And now you can see that I have a goal which is going to be monitoring the CPU temp for me during the solving process. Uh, and it's useful for post-processing also. So with all of that uh, inserted, I can now actually set this model to run. 
Now it's going to mesh and solve. Uh, meshing is something we'll cover in another video, but uh, Flow EFD can utilize multiple cores during the solve phase, so you can uh, use as many CPUs and as much RAM as your machine has. Uh, this is part of the base package. It does not require additional licenses, so uh, that's, that's quite nice in that it's parallelized out the box. So I'm just going to jump over to another project where I have uh, the model already set up. And we can have a look at various features inside the model. So a cut plot, for example, will show us slices through the model colored by various parameters. So let's go to a wireframe view and let's look from the top. Uh, let's look from the top this way, like so. And if I have a look now, we're slicing through the, uh, the PC, uh, the heatsink. Excuse me, but if I probe this now, I can get an idea of what the temperature of the air is going to be. So my ambient looks like my previous model set up to 95. I can mouse over and get an understanding of what the temperature is at various locations in the model. Well, uh, I can move this up and down. So if I slice this through my uh, my chips, for example, I can again mouse over, get an idea of what my component temperatures are going to look like. Okay, and it's not just temperatures I can look at, I can also ver look at the flow speeds. So if I plot the velocity now, it's going to show us a high velocity at the fan outlet, yeah, as the uh, flow has to squeeze out through those narrow gaps. And if I, again, move this through some of my vent holes, you can start to see some of these jets forming as the flow is uh, squeezed through the inlet holes as well. So we can use this to look at the flow through the model and I can animate this and it will show me slices through the model uh, as I move the plane up and down uh, through my assembly, my solid edge assembly. So the next thing we might want to do is have a look at solid uh, surface plots. So let's have a look at the, uh, the PCB temperature. So here's my PCB colored with uh, temperature uh, including all of my components and again we can kind of see and get an idea of what the uh, the temperature of the components are going to be ranging from 170 to down to 115. If I look at the back of my board if there's any hot spots which are starting to become present I can probe those and understand what the, uh, the hot spot temperatures are going to be. Uh, and also let's have a look at the heatsink temperature. Right, so we can get an understanding of what the heatsink temperature is going to look like. And if I hide that now and change the solid temperature down to the heat transfer coefficient, the H, this will show us how effective the heatsink is at moving the heat back into the air and where it's the most effective. So you can see on the leading edge of the heatsink fins uh, and the top edges, the heatsink fins where we're getting the most flow, the, the highest velocity and the highest delta T, that's where the, uh, the, air, the heat transfer into the air is maximized. And along the top faces of the fins as well, you can kind of see better heat transfer, but within the fins themselves, very, very little. Um, so this gives an idea of what, how effectively the heatsink is, is, is convecting heat into the air. Finally, let's have a look at the casing temperatures. Touch temperatures in the model is, is absolutely critical for passing uh, device regulations uh, to ensure uh, people won't burn themselves on electronics equipment. And you can see I'm getting a maximum of about 108 degrees Fahrenheit touch temperature on the outlet of the fan. And that's just within acceptable limits for electronics enclosures, uh, external touch temperatures. And we can get a map of what the temperature looks like in the box. Finally, we can have a look at what the airflow in the model looks like. So let's go back to a solid view and plot the airflow in the model. I can see how the air is dynamically moving through my electronics enclosure. So the CFD simulation is solving for full conduction, convection and radiation. So it's, it's, we're able to see the airflow. We can visualize what the conduction uh, the convection and the radiative heat transfer looks like in the model uh, and get an idea for how our electronics are going to perform before we've even started prototyping this particular example. So there's the airflow. Uh, finally, if we want to have a look at what the solid, uh, the steady state temperatures of all the components are, we can plot those onto the screen uh, and we can see here my CPU temperature is 170, my GPU 
146 and my th my four rams are about 155 degrees fahrenheit so that's within acceptable uh acceptable operating limits for my components and i've also got a fan flow rate of 4.46 meters cube per hour uh, on the outlet so now that we've done this preliminary cfd analysis of this electronics uh, the next step would be to move on to optimization and what if analyses for example we could change the parameters of the heatsink to uh, you know make the fins thicker or the base thicker or change the display angle we could move the fan around so where, where's the most optimum position of the fan on the, in this casing so all of these things we can investigate in cfd uh, to understand what the the best performance for the electronics are going to be before you've manufactured anything uh, before you prototyping bef before you go to the test phase